Hello, so today we're taking a look at the Aerosex P92 Echo or Technam P92 Echo in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So this is really going to be a bit of a cautionary tale I think today. Somebody messaged me saying you need to go and buy this airplane, it's really great. And I did no kind of research before I looked. Look at the texture on the wing of the the panel you know of the rivets that's just a hint of what's to come look at the porridge texturing <laughs> and the the material texturing look at the low polygon counts it's it's really quite shocking compared to i guess we've cut we've got used to very very high quality models in the simulator so it's a bit of a shock when you see one that is nowhere near other aircraft that are coming out anyway we're not going to beat on it too much but we are going to say it's very expensive for what you get. So this is the sim market price for it. It's €23.99. Euros I would have been happier if it had been under 10 for this quality. But we'll, we will soldier on. So let's just try something out here. Yeah, so if we remove the parking brake, that makes all the tie downs, the chocks and the covers disappear. We'll leave the parking brake on for the moment. So inside you can see, it. Really, you can really double down. This is far far below the quality we're used to seeing now the texture resolutions are awful the low polygon count is awful and the labels stuck all over everything look like somebody printed them out on a 1980s bubble jet and cut them out by hand with scissors and stuck them on with a print stick or something it's just awful compared uh, unfortunately compared to other aircraft that are now available Anyway, fuel shutoff valves are either side of the cockpit. So we'll go and turn those on. The master power switch seems to turn on all of the avionics as well. So let's hope we don't get a surge that blows everything. That seems remarkably inaccurate. If it's true of the real aircraft, that's quite kind of stunning. Uh, turn the beacon light on before we start the engine. Uh, let's just have a look at the levers that we can throw around the cockpit. So we've got the throttle there. There is no mixture control. There's no spoilers in this aircraft, but we do have a flap switch which works over there, which is quite good. OK, let's go and turn the engine over then. So engine fired up on idle and it died again, which is interesting. So we've got some bizarre sounds going on there as well. It's all rather interesting, isn't it? So we are at Boonville, by the way, in the US. So let's go and taxi out. Oh, before we do that, let's go and put this on map mode at least, even though we're not going to be really using the GPS. Ah, oh, this is a bit of a... It's a bit of a letdown, isn't it, when you go and spend the money on an aeroplane and then you get in it and you realise, actually you've been done really but anyway I said I would try not to beat up on it too much before we go anywhere let's go and stick on the parking brake and go and listen outside oh we are managing to levitate the rear wheels what about if we give it some elevator as well that's rather interesting okay Turning circle's good. The turn coordinator didn't seem to want to play ball then. It seems to be thinking we are pitching the aeroplane over while we're on the ground, which is interesting. Anyway. I think we're having some issues today with the data coming from the servers. It's not at the quality it would normally be at, but we'll soldier on. So, full throttle. Avoid the bus. And there was a no flaps takeoff there. No need to use flaps for an aircraft this size on that sort of runway. So we're going out absolutely full throttle. Pull the throttle back a little bit. Let's have a look from outside. So it doesn't actually look too bad. 
it's just a shame that it's not to the quality we've come to expect in the simulator. But let's see if it redeems itself in terms of its flying qualities, shall we? So we're climbing out away from Boonville and begin a turn. Holding just above 60 knots at the moment. So we go a bit steeper to maintain the same airspeed as we turn. I suppose it is nice that we have a turn coordinator, which you don't always get in aircraft of this size, even if it doesn't seem to respond properly. But we'll see, we'll carry on. The aircraft does slide a lot in turns, doesn't it? We're having to in input a lot of rudder to keep it coordinated. Climbing and climbing and climbing. Let's go for a max power climb. So what sort of climb rate can it sustain? About 1500 feet a minute by the look of it. Just watching the indicated airspeed here and adjusting attitude and then, well, between 1200 and 1500, somewhere around that. Okay, so how high are we off the ground now? High enough. Let's pull the throttle back, let's idle, and let's see how it behaves in the store. Store warning way before the marker though, which is odd. And it drops a wing. And if we hold it in, just holding back stick and continuing to hold back stick to see how it behaves. So it won't spin, which is one thing, I guess. So let's climb back out and turn back around the airfield as we go. So it does slide alarmingly. You have to input a lot of rudder compared to other aircraft in the simulator to maintain a coordinated turn. So let's see if it will spin. So we're going to pull the throttle back. We're pulling in back stick the whole time. And we'll go. It's not going to spin right. What about left? Oh, so right. I mean, it wouldn't spin left. It won't spin. Or certainly not. Not for me, anyway. Okay. So let's circle round and try and approach and see how it behaves on an approach. I guess one of the thing, nice things about this aircraft, it does have an autopilot, so at least it has that saving grace that if you do like flying longer distances with a small aircraft, it has got that option. It's just really, really odd that the modelling is such low resolution. And the texturing as well is just almost non-existent. I mean, look at the... you can see the pixels on the compass, and it's got weird aberrations going on in the rendering. So let's go for a steep approach, see it. See how it gets on, do a touch and go to begin with. So with full flaps they don't seem to be generating much in the way of drag. We're holding airspeed in a very shallow flight path with idle throttle, which seems a bit odd to me. For an aircraft of this type. But it takes off, as you'd imagine, an aircraft like this should. It's an interesting one, though, isn't it? It's 
very, very stable at low speed, has to be said, with the flaps. So it flies quite well, this is the shame of it. It's very docile, it doesn't tumble, it doesn't spin, but it just looks awful. <laughs> Or should I say, it looks awful compared to some of the competing aircraft in the same price range for the simulator. Okay, so let's keep an eye on the wrong way. Steep turn. So I'm over, overrunning on purpose so I can zigzag back to get to the runway and lose some speed and some height along the way. Now I've kind of um, found out that this is so stable. We can have some fun with coming in slowly. It's like hanging on the wing, isn't it? And it does it very, very nicely and very easily, it has to be said. onto the runway. Of course it has a tricycle undercarriage so you don't have to worry too much. Let's just turn around. Turning circle is very good. Flaps up. And we'll taxi in. So yeah it's it's a shame isn't it? Especially given that the other Technam aircraft available for the simulator is so good. The P2006T is amazing. This is not, not so amazing, I'm afraid. I think if this had come out before Flight Simulator arrived, it would have been seen as very, very good in the other simulators like P3D or FSX. But the bar has been raised in Flight Simulator. People expect photorealism inside the cockpits now at all price ranges. And this just isn't there. It flies fine. It's just a real shame. And you can hear there's lots of sounds going on. It's it's just a shame. It may be that this is built by a lone developer. So that shouldn't be an excuse. And it, this may be their first product for Flight Simulator. So maybe they're learning. But I think maybe we shouldn't have to pay for that learning process. Anyway, wheel brakes on. Magneto is off. Fuel shut off, closed. And turn off the lights and turn off the power. Do the doors or anything work? What do we get in the book? The book, oh, the book actually opens and we get some options. See, this is interesting, isn't it, look? So they have given us a load of options for it, about showing a glass cockpit. Okay, that just removes the glass from the instruments. So instead of having the frosted look, which seems to be what they've done here, I've seen this on a few aeroplanes now, to model reflections, if we go around, can we get a shallow angle on them? No, they haven't even done that. They've just put a frost effect on. I'm just trying to see if we can see reflections inside the cockpit no they've just put frost in front of them it's not even reflecting okay so i'm not going to bother delving too much into this it's just a shame isn't it there's a a flap gauge which looks like it's about 100 dpi over there show baggage or not exterior options wheel chocks pito cover the, those are the things that we saw that when you're on the wheel brakes yeah so we can make them appear or disappear or well, the parking brake I mean sorry so is there another page nope that's all there is click on the spiral to close it so that puts it back away can we open the door maybe yes we can how about that door does that work 
click spot's a bit random, but yes, it does work. Can we move the external view? Yeah, it doesn't clip it. So yeah, the you can see the problem with the texturing is just it's quite bad. And yeah, look, it's odd. And here as well, the simulator has moved on. This sort of thing just isn't really good enough anymore. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. And you can make up your own mind. It flies fine. It just looks awful. Okay, I'm going to leave it there and I'll see you again soon.